What's up, everybody? I gotta show you something today. This is not gonna be a long video. First, we gotta do a little yard work. I'm just gonna be using all of my Toro electric stuff, things that were not sent to me, stuff that I bought to keep me with my same batteries and make it all easy. So, this one's gonna be a main topic of conversation today, not as a review, but something else that maybe, maybe they're not gonna like so much. We'll see. Let's go ahead and roll that intro. What's up, everybody? Okay, so clearly I love all of these tools. I have now been using them for a little while, and you gotta remember that I didn't use any sort of rotary mower for many, many years. I've been doing nothing but real rotary mowing, and you know, it's nice to switch it up every now and again. I love that rotary mower. So I also have the string trimmer. That thing works great. I've used it in all kinds of situations, into very aggressive weeds, big, thick uh, thistles and things like that. It'll pretty much take down anything. No problems with that. I got the blower on suggestion by Jake, I think. Jake. Um, a, I needed to get another one. The one that I have is just garbage, and uh, I didn't really like it anyway. So, might as well stay inside the universe, grab this one. Well, it works great. I mean, it's got, you know, kind of the, the auto, you can kind of switch the trigger and it, you know, does things automatically. And then you've got this boost here with this little thumb button that'll give you a little more power. So whenever you push that, it kind of fires the thing up to make uh, a bigger force of air coming through it. So here's the thing. First time I used this, 
I blew out my garage. The garage accumulates some dust in here just because of cars and like wintertime stuff and just dirt, you know, general dust. So I was blowing the thing out and I started to feel a shock in my thumb. And I thought, well, that's kind of strange. So I kind of stopped for a second, looked and, you know, made sure all my battery connection and all this kind of stuff was looking inside of it. I didn't smell anything electric. Went back and pushed it again, started blowing. Same thing started to happen. It was charging and sending electricity up through this button right here. Okay. Now, if anybody has ever had one of those jokes played on them, you know, with the hand shaking thing, it's like a buzzer and grabs it. It kind of feels like that. So it just kind of gives you a shock. So I ran it a bunch, kind of took it around. Just anything that was kicking up a fine dust, like you saw when I was blowing around out on the driveway, that is static charging through this system, and the only place it likes to come out is right here. Now, I'm not exactly sure why. I'm not going to take this thing apart to find out, but it's only in dusty or very fine particle situations, which a lot of the time you're going to find unless all you're blowing off is grass clippings or something like that, maybe leaves in the yard. Around here, though, dust is pretty common, and especially with the fires and the windstorms and things that have been coming through, we've been getting kind of a lot of it. So that super fine particle is charging up as it spins through here, forcing electricity and doing miniature lightning strikes to the only thing that it can, which is your body. So I think the thing about this is, while it's not the end of the world, it is a problem because it's extremely uncomfortable. The other day when I was blowing off the driveway and, and getting stuff kicked around, my thumb went numb because it was getting shocked so much coming through there. So, you know, really the only way around it is to just go ahead and lock this trigger to be blowing but then the second you touch that blue button, it's like zap and it'll, it'll hit you pretty hard and it'll just keep charging as long as the dust is on it. Now you can see how much dust is on this thing because it's, it's collecting it, it's plastic. So there's charges happening going back and forth. And you know, we could make this into something really fun and turn it into a teachable moment about uh, CECs in your soil. The finer the particle, the more it's going to charge up the more cations you're going to be able to hold and exchange, which could also bind things up. But the smaller your soil particle, the higher the CEC. So let's talk about fun stuff with CEC. I'm gonna put this down. Those small particles really do an awful lot for you. So in a lot of the things that I've been seeing in soil tests who actually contain the CEC, when I put those out and I'm explaining people how they should be feeding, oftentimes when you're dealing with like a higher CEC soil, it's going to be more clay and obviously more organic matter things like that. That's going to allow a greater charge up. And in those situations, you can feed heavy because sometimes you're going to get some binding of certain nutrients because the soil holds on to things greater. Now with something like sand or more coarse material, you have less surface area, you have less of that sort of electric energy happening and you need to feed a little bit differently. So those folks that have done soil tests with me that have had lower CECs, I've gone through and said, hey, you might be needing to feed every three to four weeks, and here's the rates that you're going to do that in order to get the greatest benefit. So let's talk a little bit more about CECs. Now, obviously I'm a big proponent of humic. That is something I produced for a long time, but long before I produced it, I just used it for a long time. And just to see the benefits and what it does for soil, either, either in sandy or in clay situations, it can be all across the spectrum. There's certain things that you're going to get with each of those dynamics. So you've got something with humic is going to have around like a 500 MEQ CEC, which is really, really good. Now consider you're putting a small amount of that off, so you're not going to see this major jump in your soil CECs, but you're going to have cations react to that material in a more positive way to be able to hold a little bit more, especially in those sandy situations. And if you're looking at sort of like a clay thing, you're actually going to get a little more mobility because there are some nutrients that will tie up other cations in the soil. When you move into the fulvic fraction, which we have and we keep in place with all of our materials, it's not something that we separate out and sell separately. You're looking at something that's about three times the rate of CEC as humic. So that's also pretty cool because now you're getting even higher concentrations and that actually tends to react a little bit more in the soil like nitrogen does and gets this sort of electricity going and gets some of these positively charged ions moving and getting into the plant the way that they're supposed to. That's why you see such a good benefit out of applying things like RGS or even Humic 12 when you get them out onto the soil and maybe things were bound up, whoosh, now we're moving up into the plant. So anyway, this was intended to be a short video and sort of a little bit of a PSA. But this thing is a little bit weird. 
I'm still trying to decide if I like it because every time I've used it now, I've gotten a little bit of a shock. Uh, and not, I say a little bit, you're gonna feel it. Um, I wish there was a way I could sort of film that, but it doesn't, I can't quite figure out how to do that. Uh, so, anybody from Toro, if you're watching this, might be something to take a look at. Make sure things are grounded properly inside here. And for those of you that have it, just be careful when you're in dusty situations. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever taken a sweet and low packet and lit it on fire. Just be careful if anybody has this in dusty situations because you might be in for a little bit of a shock. I'll talk to you guys real soon. See ya.